The uh, offshore oil rigs, excuse me, mm -hmm. that dot California's coast help quench America's thirst for energy. But they do so at uh, risk to their workers and to the environment. Tony Rosamano has this rare look inside the operation of an offshore rig. This is the only view of California's offshore oil platforms that most of us can see. A fuzzy jumble of machinery piercing the fog near Santa Barbara. But this is the view that workers get as they're shuttled out on a boat to begin their tour of duty aboard Platform Gale, one of 32 platforms off the coast. Nine miles out, an elephant seal bull sounds a warning as he guards his harem. Two pups romp nearby in seemingly orchestrated play. A pod of dolphin race past en route to the Channel Islands. Above it all, towers an alien and dangerous visitor. You're in a very nasty environment. The ocean is a very unforgiving place, and this makes it more so. Visitors and crew are hoisted on board with a Billy Pew, a flat disc named for the company that makes it. I didn't know about this until I was on the crew boat. My first reaction was to cancel the trip and come home. Workers persuaded me the Billy Pew was safer than trying to dock at the platform in swelling seas. It only made me think, if this is the safe part, what the heck else is out here? Poison gas, for one thing. Hydrogen sulfide is in the crude oil and natural gas pumped up through some of Gale's 25 wells. Everyone who stays on board is required to complete a class in gas safety. Other dangers? Well, this isn't the place to be if you're afraid of heights or prone to not watching where you step. The open catwalk grating has you hanging out 100 feet above the ocean. Vertigo? You bet. Gale is a city at sea. It makes its own power and drinking water, processes sewage, and is both home and work for a few dozen men and a couple of women for a week at a time. Probably the best part is uh, the seven on, seven off shift. Uh, we, we come out, we work seven days, and then we're home for seven days. While they're on board, they pull 12 hour shifts. The other 12 hours just separate the days. I usually go to my room and I just uh, pick up a book and read till I go to sleep and then get up and do it again. Workers sleep in bunks, four to six to a room. There's no getting away from the noise or the smell of sulfur. The platform operates 24 hours a day. Outside at night, burning gas looks like a huge tribal torch. It's actually a massive pilot light, ready to ignite fumes from an unexpected surge in well or processing pressure. A few miles away, Gale's sister platforms stand out against an ink-black sea and sky. Despite all the dangers, workers say the worst part of the job is being away from home for a week at a time. My father died when I was offshore, and it, it still haunts me now. That was 10 years ago, and it bothers me now that I wasn't there when he passed away. Platform Gale can accommodate up to 93 people at a time, but the entire oil and gas production and pumping operation is actually run by as few as five people, plus an additional half dozen or so technicians on standby. It's a mentally demanding job, even when everything is going right. But when things go wrong, like they did during a Santa Barbara oil platform blowout in 1969, the consequences can change the world. It pretty much launched the modern environmental movement. More tomorrow aboard Platform Gale. I'm Tony Russomano, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Platform Gale is owned by the oil company Venico, which bought it from Chevron two years ago. You know, the offshore oil platforms that you can see up and down California's coast have long been a subject of controversy. In part two of his look at life on an offshore platform, Tony Rosamano examines some of the consequences of such drilling and how it affects the lives of those who do it for a living. Deep beneath the ocean surface, natural gas and oil seep from cracks in the floor of the Santa Barbara Channel. The oil bubbles up as it has for thousands of years. Chumash Indians used it to waterproof their canoes. Elsewhere in the channel, pipes now encase wells that tap into some of those same oil deposits. Only it's not bubbles that rise to the surface here, but massive steel skeletons nearly as tall as the Empire State Building, topped by that ultimate expression of the automobile age, an offshore oil drilling platform. I can't wait till they're gone. <laughs> you might expect Linda Kropp to say that. As senior staff attorney of Santa Barbara's Environmental Defense Center, Kropp believes the risks of offshore oil production far outweigh the benefits. But would you expect to hear almost the same words about platforms from a senior platform worker? You would if you talked to Al Froes. And I would like to see them gone. Unlike anti-oil environmentalists, however, Froes believes oil drilling platforms are what he calls a necessary evil. If we don't extract it, we're foolish. 
We're going to be dependent on someone else to give us that. Here on Platform Gale, nine miles off the coast, Throwis and a crew of a couple of dozen workers keep the machinery running nonstop, producing 4,500 barrels of oil and 10 million cubic feet of natural gas every day. Control room. Computers control the production process that pumps the oil to a refinery in Los Angeles. All of Platform Gale's crude is turned into gasoline, motor oil, and jet fuel. And right from here, too, I can adjust valves to, uh, you know, to open, uh, to get more heat if I need to, you know, close down, uh, adjust my temperatures. So I can do a lot of that right from in here. As state-of-the-art as its systems are, Platform Gale and 31 others like it off the California coast may already be dinosaurs doomed to extinction. Last month, a federal judge in Oakland gave the state significant new power to stop future exploration or drilling. It's huge. Um, this is the first time in the country where a state will be allowed to review federal oil activities at the early leasing stage. It was a massive blowout of an offshore platform in 1969 that fouled Santa Barbara beaches, launched the modern environmental movement, and resulted in virtually all of the existing state and federal environmental laws we have today. It also made platform workers extraordinarily defensive. When I talk to people on shore, you know, you tell you work for an oil company, right off the bat, they've got you pegged as some kind of a gross polluter. I live in Santa Barbara, and I go to the beach in Santa Barbara, and I definitely do not want anything to harm the ocean anywhere in the world, but especially right here. But Linda Kropp says platform workers themselves are often the strongest advocates of safety. I think the workers have every intention of operating those platforms as safely as they can. Obviously, if there's an accident, they're the ones that are closest, and I don't criticize the workers at all. Every action has its consequences. Perhaps nowhere is that more apparent than on an oil drilling platform, nor more obvious than to the men and women who work there. Aboard Platform Gale, I'm Tony Russomano, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Platform Gale is owned by Vinico. Two years ago, another Vinico platform near Santa Barbara and an onshore processing plant were shut down by state authorities for a month following the release of a potentially deadly poison gas.